All right, hey, what's up, guys? Liberal gun guy here, left end loaded. Wanted to start out real quick. First gun-related video. I've got two guns in front of me, and we're gonna talk about them for a moment. Um, terminology, lingo, was something that I found to be uh, a little bit intimidating when I first got into the gun world, and I felt a little bit dumb walking into a gun shop not knowing the lingo or the terminology and trying to pick up on it best I could. And unfortunately, there's a lot of places that you might go, people that you might meet, that if you use the wrong terminology, then they will make you feel dumb for it. Or they will maybe think you're not worthy of a conversation with them because you don't know the right terminology. So to spare anyone that experience, I thought a quick video about some of the basics of firearms if you're brand new to the firearms world and this might be helpful. So we're going to talk about two different kinds of guns and then some of the individual components of the gun that will help you when you're looking for a gun or you walk into a gun shop or a pawn shop or a gun show interested in looking at a gun, not make some of the common mistakes that people make in terminology or regarding terminology. So. We'll start with the most common that you'll see nowadays, which is a semi-automatic pistol. Uh, Semi-auto meaning it feeds rounds through a magazine. And every time you pull the trigger, a new round gets fed after the old round is ejected. So that's a semi-auto. We're also gonna talk about a revolver. Most people are familiar with revolvers or maybe think that they're antiquated and they're not around anymore. That is. False revolvers are absolutely still made. They're still very popular, both for home defense and for carrying and for competition purposes. So we will talk a little bit about revolvers as well. So one of the first rules of gun safety is always assume that the gun is loaded until you have cleared it yourself and ensured that it is safe. So I'm gonna assume this gun is loaded even though I know I took all of the cartridges out of the magazine and out of the gun. We will assume that it's loaded and we will safety check it. You notice I will never put my finger on the trigger of a gun that I don't intend to shoot. So how do we check it to make sure that it's safe? Well, first things first, we take the magazine out, the little button right here, push that little button, magazine pops out, I'll show you again. Ejection button, magazine release, magazine comes out. We can see this magazine is empty. There's nothing in it, this little follower right here is brightly colored. Um, I'll explain why it's brightly colored maybe in another video, but the color is important and there's nothing in it. It is empty. The next thing is even more critical and a lot of people forget this part of safety checking a firearm. A gun can hold rounds in the magazine and yes, this is called a magazine, not a clip. You will hear people mistakenly refer to this as a clip, not a clip a magazine. The second step of safety checking a pistol, a semi-automatic firearm such as this one, this is a little 380 Smith & Wesson M&P bodyguard. This is a concealed carry gun, very, very, very small, fits in a pocket. Um, the second way that you check a gun, once you've identified the magazine and you've confirmed that the magazine is indeed empty, you have to check to make sure that there's not a round in the chamber. So when you hear things like 12 plus one capacity, that means that the gun can hold 12 rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber for a total of 13. This gun holds six in the magazine plus one in the chamber for a total capacity of seven. So there could be a round in the chamber of this gun and we wanna make sure that there's not. And the way that you do that, again, keeping your finger always off the trigger, is you just pull back on the slide. This is the slide right here. There's some finger serrations that you can use to get a better grip of the gun. Pull back on the slide, and you just check that the inside of the gun, always pointed away from you, is empty. And you can see here, this is empty. We know that for sure. And if I'm looking at it, I would look at it kind of like this, pointing the gun away from me in a safe direction and ensure there is no round in the chamber. So this gun has now been confirmed safe. 
The revolver is even simpler. The revolver does not have the ability to keep a round in the chamber. It only has the ability to keep rounds in the cylinder. The cylinder being the round part that you see the, the good guys spin before they pop it back in and, and take a shot. Again, finger always off the trigger. So I will release the cylinder and I will simply check that there is nothing inside of that cylinder. And you can see this camera is on a tripod, so you don't have to worry. I'm not pointing it in an unsafe direction at someone, but this gun has nothing in the cylinder. If you were looking at it from my vantage point, you would see that this gun has nothing in the cylinder. Cylinder's empty, this gun is safe, but you still really want to get into the habit of never pointing the muzzle or the barrel of the gun in a direction towards anything that you wouldn't want to put a hole in or kill. So always best to point the muzzle of the gun, that would be the firing end of the weapon, in a safe direction. Not towards your TV if you don't want it to be dead, not towards your pet dog over there if you don't want it to be dead, not towards your sister if you don't want her to be dead. So we've checked that both of these guns are unloaded and safe. So moving on, couple of, again, quick verbiage, lingo, uh, the lexicon of, of gun words is complicated maybe, a little bit confusing sometimes, but it's, it's good to know these things before you start going gun shopping so that maybe you can keep up with some of the terminology. So on a semi-automatic pistol, you have your pistol, you have kind of a few major components you have the length of the barrel on the inside, um, which is not the overall length of the gun, so keep that in mind. I believe this has a two and a quarter inch barrel, so a very small barrel, and the barrel's pretty much gonna end here and here. So that is the barrel, it's a very small barrel. Um, the barrel sits underneath the slide. This is the slide, the part that slides back and forth that feeds the rounds into the chamber that then fire out of the gun when you pull the trigger. The slide creates all of the movement on the inside of the pistol when you're firing rounds, and the momentum of the bullet, which is the tip of the cartridge, we'll talk about that, escaping, and the explosion causes rearward momentum, which pulls the slide backwards. And when the slide comes forward, it puts another round in the chamber. Now, while it slides backwards, again, momentum of the explosion, slide goes backwards, it spits the empty cartridge out before it feeds a new round into the chamber. That is the basic functionality of a semi-automatic pistol. And you can do that by simply pulling the trigger over and over again until your magazine is empty. And on better guns, uh, I, I hesitate to say more expensive guns because that's not always the case, but most modern quality semi-automatic guns, when you fire the last round and it ejects that cartridge, it will hold open the slide indicating that the magazine is empty. I can show you what that looks like. Let's pretend I just fired the last round. Pow, slide goes back and magazine locks. That's where that red follower comes in so that if I'm in a dimly lit situation, I can glance down at the gun, the breech of the gun, which is the opening here, and see that red follower indicating to me I am out of rounds, I am out of ammunition, and I need to eject the magazine and replace it with a new full magazine. That is the basic functionality of a semi-automatic handgun. You have a magazine, you have a barrel, you have a slide, you have your frame, and this part is not called the handle, this is called the grip. And this teeny tiny little pocket gun has a very small 
two finger grip, two fingers if you're lucky. And here you can see, I'm barely able to get that second finger on this grip. This gun is designed to be very small and very concealable. So that's a semi-automatic. Couple other little parts maybe of note would be your magazine release, which is this little button right here. You push that button, it drops the magazine. Most, again, most modern guns, you push that button, the magazine is not just going to release, it's also gonna fall out. Gravity will allow it to fall out. That allows for faster reloading of a new magazine. You also have your slide stop. If I pull back, it might be kind of hard to do this on camera, I pull back on this slide, this little lever right here is what stops the slide when the magazine is empty or when you want to stop the slide and hold it back. It is not a slide release. You'll see a lot of these tactical guys on YouTube using this slide stop lever here as a slide release. So they load a new magazine, they've got another round ready to go, they wanna get that round into the chamber, and you'll see them use their thumb on this little guy right here to release the slide. Problem with that is it puts quite a bit of pressure on the internal components of the slide and the rails that the slide sits on inside of the frame. Now, this is a polymer frame. It's made out of a plastic polymer, and a lot of modern handguns, semi-automatic handguns, are polymer. One of the benefits of polymer is that it's very light. So a lightweight, concealable pocket gun like this, if all of this frame were made out of metal, it would weigh a lot more. The slide is typically gonna be made of steel. So the slide is the heaviest part of the gun. They're very top heavy. You also have your sights on this gun. You have little blacked out sights. They're a little bit harder to see. You'll hear things like night sights, which uh, I think obviously common sense dictates that night sights mean that they can be seen at night. You'll also see uh, tritium night sights, so they're kind of glow in the dark. You'll see fiber optic sights, which means that they're easier to see in low light situations. They'll capture a lot of light and you'll be able to really line up those sights. Anybody that's ever shot a BB gun and you kind of go dot, 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 that's called a three dot sight. When you are pointing the gun in the direction of what you want to shoot at, the target, in this case, you would want that target to fall right on top of that center dot that should be right between your left and right dot. But we'll, again, we'll get into that later. So you have your slide, you have your frame, including the grip, and you have your trigger. You have a slide stop, you have, in this case, a takedown lever that allows you to disassemble the gun to clean it, and in the case of this little bodyguard right here, our safety, in this case, is a really tough safety. It's not easy to flip up and down. You'll hear a lot of people talk about their disdain for manual safeties. Well, that'll be up to you to decide. Do you need a manual safety? Do you want a manual safety? This gun has a manual safety. I purchased this gun for my wife to conceal carry in a handbag. So having that manual safety is just an extra layer of safety and security for her when she's carrying it. Kind of hard to engage. And that's pretty much it. That makes up the brunt of your semi-automatic polymer framed pistol. This one chambered in, meaning the size of the round that it takes, it is chambered in 380 ACP. ACP stands for Automatic Colt Pistol. It's a small round. People will tell you it's underpowered. There's a whole nother conversation to be had there, but 380 is a decent round for self-defense. Uh, it's going at a decent speed and it has a decent sized bullet in it. This is a hollow point. This expands upon contact. And uh, this is a Hornady critical defense bullet or round, I guess, with a copper jacketed hollow point projectile.
aka Bullet. So as you can tell, just from the last few minutes, there is a lot of lingo that goes into guns. A lot, and it can be very confusing. So to add to the complexity and confusion of tonight, we will also talk a little bit about revolvers. Now, I'm not a huge revolver guy. Uh, some people swear by them, they think that they're better, they'll tell you that they malfunction less, they're simpler, there's less parts to break. All of that may or may not be true. Um, I think if you pull out a gun and you need to use it, God forbid, and the gun goes bang, it doesn't really matter what you're carrying as long as you are comfortable carrying and shooting it. The number one most important thing that you can do when it comes to owning a firearm and especially carrying a firearm or keeping it in your house for self-defense is to practice with it. If you're not practicing with it, if you're not comfortable with it, then it could be more of a danger to you than to the bad guy that, that may break into your house or, or try to rob you on the street. So remember that, practice, practice, practice. And a lot of the gun community will refer to that as training. You train with your gun. This was carried by a police officer as a backup gun. This is a Rossi. 1984 about Rossi 38 Special. The 38 Special is the type of cartridge that it takes. We've already safety checked this gun, but I always check it again, make sure it's empty. This revolver is known as a single action, double action revolver. That means that it can be fired in both single action and double action. And I will explain what that means because boy, was that a mind trip when I first started learning about it. But this revolver is referred to as a snub nose revolver, meaning that it has a very short barrel. In this case, a mere two and a half inches, two and a half inch barrel, snub nose revolver. It fires a 38 special. Now this round is gonna look much, much bigger than this little 380, if I could get a hold of it. The 380 is a much smaller cartridge, but, and it might be hard to tell, they are basically the same size bullet. You can see the 38 Special's a little bit bigger. You might not even be able to tell in the video, but they are, for the most part, the exact same diameter. And if I had a nine millimeter bullet, I could show you that they are also the same diameter, 38 Special, 357 Magnum, 380 ACP, and 9mm are all the same diameter of your barrel. So you can actually use the same tools to clean those guns. Uh, that was something that confused me when I first started buying guns. I thought I would need different tools for every different gun, but a 38 Special, a 380, and a 9mm all use the same cleaning tools because they all have the same diameter barrel. Crazy, right? So with a revolver, you open up your cylinder. That's this little guy right here. It's a cylinder. It's round. It's cylindrical. It spins. It's a cylinder. And you load in, in this case, five rounds. Once they're in there, you close your cylinder and the gun is now ready to fire. You don't have to pull back on the slide like a semi-auto to load the round into the chamber. So when people are first looking into revolvers, they may not realize that extra step is missing. That extra layer of safety is missing. This gun with rounds in the cylinder is ready to fire and there is no safety anywhere on this gun. So how can you safely carry this gun? Well, you safely carry this gun two ways. Number one, you trained with it. You're comfortable with it. Number two, you do not put your finger anywhere near that trigger until you're ready to fire the weapon. Now, the only real thing that I'm gonna share about the revolver today will be the whole concept of single action, double action. Because we have the same thing. We have the frame, we have the trigger, we have the grip. In this case, we have a hammer. This gun is also 
uh, a hammer fired gun. There is a hammer inside there, it's hidden. But in this case, it has an external hammer. And you see that a lot in movies. They'll pull back on that. I'm gonna check one more time just to make sure that we didn't load anything in there. They'll pull back on that hammer before they fire the gun. Now, why would they do that? Well, they do that because when you pull back on the hammer like that with your thumb, and then you fire the pistol, it is a much shorter, easier pull of the trigger to make the gun fire. And that is known as single action. Because when you pull the trigger, the only action that the gun is performing is the one action of releasing this hammer to hit the firing pin, to hit the primer, ignite the cartridge to shoot the bullet forward. That is single action. You pull back on that hammer, that trigger now is way back. I'll show you the difference. This is where the trigger normally sits, about halfway up here. Pull it back to single action, that trigger is almost all the way back to the frame. So single action, it only performs one action. You pull it, it releases the hammer. What's neat about a double action, single action gun is that you have the option to pull the trigger and have the trigger pull perform two actions. The act of cocking that hammer, so pulling the hammer back and releasing the hammer to fire your projectile. So it's doing two things when you pull the trigger in double action mode. It is pulling the hammer back, and you can see it here. I will pull that trigger, it's much harder. You pull the trigger, you can see it's pulling that hammer back slowly, it's moving the next round into place, and then keep pulling and it releases the hammer as well. That is double action. So if you want accuracy, if you know you're about to fire the gun, you might manually cock that hammer to put it in single action to get an easier, softer, potentially more accurate shot because you have way less distance for that tr trigger to travel. So that is single action versus double action on a revolver. There is also single and double action on a semi-auto because some semi-autos have a manual hammer as well. You'll see an external hammer that you can pull back with your thumb and I can show you one of those guns in another video. You pull it back with your thumb, you're now in single action. You leave it forward, you're now in double action. And then to add one more layer of confusion and complexity, there are some guns like a Glock that is neither single action nor double action, but is technically a double action if you ask most people because it's doing more than one thing inside the gun when you pull the trigger. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. I hope we can remember some of the lingo. We've got a magazine, we've got a grip, we've got a frame, we've got a slide, and in this case, we have a cylinder, we have a hammer, we have a frame, and we have a grip. If you can remember those few things when you go gun shopping, you might prevent foot in mouth disease where you walk in and you say, how many rounds does the clip hold? You're gonna get weird looks, they're gonna correct you, you're gonna feel dumb, and that's my least favorite part of all of this, is when someone is new to the firearm community, when they're interested in guns for the very first time, there are jerks and jackasses out there that will try to make you feel stupid, and then you may be dissuaded from returning to that gun shop that pawn shop, that gun show booth, because nobody likes to feel dumb. So if you can remember those couple of things, this is not a bullet, this is a cartridge. You could also call it a round. This, the tip right there, that's the bullet. But this whole thing is a cartridge. Hollow points are not scary. They are what everybody uses for personal defense. 
Uh, I know that when I was growing up, I heard of hollow points as cop killers and, and these evil, violent things. Why would anybody carry a hollow point? Well, you carry a hollow point because you don't want your bullet, if you're trying to stop a bad guy, you don't want the bullet going through the bad guy and then potentially into a good guy or an innocent bystander. A hollow point is more likely to stop once it hits the bad guy. So three things out on the table, a semi-automatic polymer framed pistol, pocket pistol, Smith & Wesson M&P bodyguard chambered in 380, and a Rossi 38 special revolver, single action, double action, and two different rounds, two different cartridges, a very small 380 ACP, and a 38 special. So I hope you found this video informative. I hope you found it helpful. If you have questions, if you have comments, I'm all about hearing your feedback. Say something down in the comments. I read all of them. If you have questions, I will try to answer them. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you thought that this video was helpful in any way, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We are just starting out. This is our very first gun-related video. Um, so that's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have suggestions for videos or things that you want to see in the future, feel free to throw it down in that comment section. And I'll see you next time. Peace.